Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and today is the calm before the storm the kind of the in-between period of before second cut silage starts and we start harvesting combine so we're going to pretty much just go through the day of what we go up to today there's some hay to be mowed, some silage to be mowed, there's sheds to be cleaned out, calves to be fed a lot of that stuff I'll just bring you in here to show you something Father Phil was at so they're completely rebuilding the pickup on the harvester they're just about finished so all new cams bushings pickup tines everything gone into it just perhaps we'll put back on the bands and we're ready to go we're starting second cut silage either tomorrow or the next day so it's kind of just works out grand pickup had when we're finishing up started to go a bit noisy so we said we'll just go change it and leave it right ready for the start of the second cuts we'll chip into the farm what we're doing first live We'll go feed a few calves. Feed the cows on the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Not a full bag, though. No. Right. You might want to put another trough on. Huh? I thought there was another trough here. No, just one trough. These are the survivors. What else could you call them, Liv? 13 of them. That's an unlucky number. Here's Simon. Come on, Simon. There's Jacket. And Jacket. Uh, no, dog isn't here. Is that dog? No, dog's, dog? dog's down the shrubbery. So, we got a delivery as well. These are the last bits we need for the big square baler. The back plunger rollers were well wore down, so we got a new set. So we have to put them into it before we can go out. So that's them. And then the bearings to go with it. And WD machinery sent up at, at top as well. So big thanks to them for that. Well, that was in with that now. Warning, this is a match bearing assembly. Mm. Very intricate bearing. Oh, I did. Sir Clip goes into Sir the middle. Sir Clip goes into the middle and then they go in both sides. They go in both sides. And then the circlip was going on the on the end. Mm. Intricate bit of a bearing. Just a bit. So here is some of the winter barley. You can see there's a couple of patches that went down with the heavy rain on Sunday, and the crows are just plaguing us at the minute. You can see them all in the wires there, and they keep dive bombing down into the crop. And knocking a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. We scare crows up, we take a shot at them every time we go in and out the avenue. And they just will not piss off. But anyways, one of the big things now is that the winter barley at the house and pretty much all the winter barley is ready to be sprayed off. So Father Phil is spending today spraying, he's getting all the spring crops up to date on their sprays. I think it's mostly just them um, fungicides. And then he's going to spray off all of them to get them ready and um, he gets them sprayed off today seven days after seven days we'll be ready to start combining so bro has been busy he power washed out the entire shed yesterday which was fair going now for him but we have a good rig for him uh, a pto power washer and then the, the the bowser for the sprayer made a serious job because he used to always be waiting for the cube to fill but that was that much water it's, it's quite it's quite a good rig so it is working that but he's this washed out so this is ready to just to dry out and then it's ready for the store green we have to clean out the side the balers are on and we have to while we're doing later on is getting the hay shed cleaned out so it can be washed out for getting the straw on, and we can wash down the passageway and then we can wash outside the front of the sheds and get all that done ready for green that's one of the other big jobs that's going on at the minute so when bro decides to get up or when we're going for coffee we'll get him up and i get him to start taking apart all the gates in both calf sheds so we can get them cleaned out because we need them for machinery storage and straw storage when the time comes so we're just in the calf shed no calves in now but we got this stuff off nova q and um, it i think it's just bacteria you throw it out on it and it's supposed to help it compost put it down in sheds before you um you go to clean it out so yeah we're just going to shake this stuff out onto the dung 
and then um, see what it does. It's to speed up the composting of the dung. So hopefully this does it because our dung doesn't exactly get a whole lot of time to compost because as soon as we get the winter barley cut, we'll be going back out with the dung so we can get proud to get the next crop in. to be able to narrow that in as I was saying this will all will bail this out this war two fields and it's just because it's not over big it's not worth while running down the rake
So, we hit stone in the wax ward. So after popping the stone guard off and then must have got caught in the knives on that side and then shoved it back in underneath the disc. How I managed that, I do not know. I cannot get a bet out. So I think I'm going to have to take off that, the top of the hat, and see will it come back out. I, it's, I can move, I can move that with my hand, but that I just cannot get a move on it. Oh, lovely, 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 lovely. Balls to it anyways. So, top of half. This is, it's broke the bracket. I'm too far from home to go home, to get fixed to come back. So I think I'm going to put back on this and then just mow that other field. It's level, it's not as rough as this one. It should be okay, just going to have to watch it carefully. But I think it's okay, it's not going to rub the disc, but it still has that little bit of a play coming up. So I just got to be very careful. Just take her nice and handy just to get out of here to get home. So, and then yeah, it fixed up to go more the rest of the stuff, but yeah, annoying that, but sure, what can you do? I get this bolter back on. It's a good thing I brought the big Milwaukee gun, otherwise it'd be a long time trying to crack them. Anyways, we get this put back together and get more. You cannot get much closer to the Shannon. Right on the bank. At the Shannon. Right on the bank. Ireland's largest waterway, or river. Just taking her nice and handy, nurse her through this little bit to get home again. So just take her nice and handy, fair and handy. And now, that's that mode. The Shannon Meadows is their call. It's unfortunate about that stone now. But we nursed her through, we have it done. We have to go home and get that sorted now before we continue mowing. Uh, behind schedule now, on, on time now, I was hoping I'd be a bit further on, but sure, what can you do? Things happen, things happen. Anyways, fold her up. Behan home. This um, field, we'll, we'll probably build these with the fusion this year. Last year we had to build them with the John Deere because they were a bit heen wet and basically we're all hopping wrap. But I think we'll get away with the fusion this year. Just something on the 6480. It's not track you see a whole lot of. I think the last time I was in it was ring rolling and I was saying a lot of the electricals had stopped working. Well, <coughs> Robert went ferreting at it and he has got everything working. There was corrosion in some of the plugs, I think it was, and a bad earth or corroded earth. And he sorted all out, and now we have all the electronics in the camper working. We have aircon, we have radio, work lights, everything now works. Tractor still isn't where it needs to be. Look, at she is a bit rough and ready, but I'm hoping this winter we can do a job like we did on the 6270, buff all the panels, tidy her up. The back end needs a good tightening up on this. The, the Lemkin Hara is an unforgiving yoke, so it is on the back of a tractor. But a bit of a tighten up and a bit of a tidy, and this tractor will be right as rain. Because when she works and she works well, it's a lovely tractor, particularly drawn or things like that, because she's, she's quick enough on the road. She's not 50k, but she's doing 42, 45k there. And you know, it's, it's a big help when you're hauling. So, Father Finn has more fixed. Fixed it while I was having the dinner, that's why there's no footage of it. So, we'll go see how we got on now. So, we're ready to start mowing. So, we we'll start her up. Just dash. Might get a little bit noisy now. So, we're in a field mowing calf paddock. Or behind. You can see the cars behind me, but I'm not trouble to walk under the fence. And um, just the, the power, well, for whatever reason, we're not getting the power to the temporary fence. The steel wire doesn't have enough in it. They have spent the last couple of days walking around, checking all the fence and seeing where, where is it losing the power. Something is draining the power on it. We found, she found a couple of bits, but still hasn't dotted where it should be. There used to be, you get five or six thousand volts in that. 
Now we're only getting one and two, and it's not enough to stop the boot. Yeah, so get under back, we're gone. But anyways, what we're doing now is semi topping, semi shaving a bit of hay. And I don't know really what you call it. We're not going to go greedy and go back sporting and keep them tight. This field is slightly dangerous for mowing. We used to mow this for pit silage and after the dry year 2018 a lot of rocks come up in it. There was rocks in it and they were grandy zip across them but after the real dry spell, dry summer of 18 a lot of them rocks come up and we stopped mowing it for silage because of that. So I have to pick me places, I know where there's clusters in them, avoid them. But the real reason we're doing this is to clean it off and reset the grass growth. It's the best, and all, it's, it's really it's the only way of doing it is topping them over it to reset the grass growth to get the real nice leafy grass coming on for the calves. Like what well, you might have seen just in the background when we started, we've got a bit of a mode for here. It's lovely best stuff, and that's where we want the calves to be, but for whatever reason they love to just come down and annoy us down here. But anyways, the John Deere mower works on the bed, it's suspended on the frame and the uh, wheels just up and down the frame. So unlike the tarot, which the tarot, the rams lifted and let down, that's what embedded the mower, this lets the frame up and down and so it's, it's broken. So what I'm doing is just letting the wheels down enough that the bed is touching the ground. So the, it, the bed is at its very lightest. So theory being that if I hit head, it should take a lot less for it to just pop up. Less weight on the ground means it should be that little bit safe for doing this. The reason we're making hay on silage is because with the going to square bale all our straw, we're pretty sure that we're going to have that extra bit of space that we're we'll able to store all this stuff in. So that's why we're not going for silage. It's also cheaper to make hay. There's no plastic involved, no wrap. So that is this field done, and I only clipped two stones. And when I mean click, you just got to clink and it pop and no damage done. So I'm happy with that now. So we'll move on to the next paddock. On some other news, in the middle of the morning, I got a phone call. I'll be going for my vaccination this weekend. I, am, I put my name down for the, to get the Johnson & Johnson, or as my mother likes to call it, the Janssen vaccine in the chemist. It'd be great to get that done and out of the way. We'll be on down the road, get this next bit done and try and get moved on to something else. A little bit disappointed that I'm still mowing. I was hoping I'd be finished by now. However, you just kind of forget how slow one more is compared to having two mowers on the go, but sure look, I wouldn't chance two mowers down here anyways, because I do not want to break the front mower again. So here we are in the next bit. The last bit to be mowed is this. So this is where all going well, we'll be running the big square baler. So that's ah, a nice little paddock, it's heavy, strong, very strong stuff on it, but um, just giving a bit of a wrecking here. That's that field up, and I only took one stone. Oh, that had quite a successful run. Next time you see this, it'll hopefully be the big square baler popping bales over. So, I'm just going to mow the next square here, and um, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I might top some of the nettles on the next one, but I won't be mowing that out. But I'll mow the next one out. So, that's the mowing done. Mowed out this bit here. Now, I didn't go down in it, I kept it up, just topped it off, you could say. And the two bits out there. I didn't bother to end with that middle bit because there's an awful lot of dirt in there. There's no point that the cattle graze over it and maybe top it. One of the reasons why I don't like topping my disc more is that his stone and popped another stone guard off. Two stone guards one day, huh? How about that? One of the things I'm kind of hoping we'll get done for next year is get a topper, like a specific topper, not a disc one. No, stay away from bloody disc mowers for topping. Oh, I get like a proper topper and preferably a wider one, like what the, the bat wings or 
one with a wing on it, yet yeah, yeah, a good wide one to keep on top of the paddocks. But if anyone has one or has any suggestions on what's a good topper, let me know. But I don't want to buy one with a bed in it like that because our ground just does not suit them. And I think if we had one that was not a flail, not a flail one, but one of them rotary ones with the two blades on it, you keep it up five inches off the ground and you'd be safe from 99% of all obstacles at that height. But that's why I'd like to do an extra. But if anyone has a topper they suggest, let me know because I'm going to be keeping my eye out for a second hand one for next year. <coughs> so, well, I'm going to go move straw out of calf sheds and start getting tid just tidying up the yard. So that's what I'm going to do for the rest of the evening. So I'll be moving straw, whatever the straw that's left in, out of the calf shed, down into a passageway, out of the way. And uh, any of the bills that come across that are really wet or just not great looking stuff all together, we're just taking straight to the dunk hole. So that is the plan anyway, so we'll get to it. The handy bit of an evening. Been annoyed like that took so long to get all that mowing done, but considering I broke down and everything, and it's only one more and everything is stuck. It is what it is, but I would have liked to got a bit more them, but who and ever. Also, we start second cut silage tomorrow, so the call, the call come in, so that's fun too. So we're pretty much set up, ready to go now. So it's all right. We just have to put tractors and trailers tomorrow, and we're ready to go. Anyways, just on something else, we got here the timber cut up. Made the banks. There's some of it there. There's more of it there. Um, cousin and uncles of mine um, have a saw bench, and they come down. And they sawed it all up for us, so I have a bit of timber. I don't really know what we're going to use it for, but we have it anyway. That is all the bales I can reach gone. I can't really go into that driving on top of the dung. I could get stuck. Uh, I don't really want to get the <laughs> teleport stuck on top of the dung, the the dung in the shed. So um, when we get around the silage done, and there's a few days, we we'll go ahead with the loading shovel and the grip, clean it up because all we have is a bucket for teleporter and a bucket and straw does not work. You just keep balling it up in front of you and. You're nearly as well take it out the pallet forks. And it comes out easier with pallet forks than the bucket. So we'll clean that shit out with the load and shovel. After we get the next bit of second cut silage done. So Robert is actually finished with the pickup of the harvester and he's just uh, getting some tractors and trailers put together. It's just going 10 o'clock. There's not much more I can do there. 
Um, so I think I will see me and Liv want to build a bit of a hen house to put the chickens move the chickens out into the orchard this orchard is kind of an enclosed area and we think well you know it's going to do two jobs for us well one is going to be kind of nicer for the chickens to have a bit of a run under them and two it's going to help keep a bit of dirt down uh, starting to get dark now we're just getting ready to start into the hen house me and Liv a neighbour drove in to say there's cattle on the road and yeah so we better tip up and there. yeah we don't from what he's saying it doesn't sound like our cattle but we better go up and see and give a hand anyways so we'll be on up the road and see what the story is turns out it is our cattle on the road we're just after fence was down here uh handles pulled so they'll run through the fence and then for whatever reason the gates were all open and the gates were all shut so yeah fun 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 so now we have to track down the cattle that are missing lovely so that is us back in the humble abode after sorting out well when i say sort we just put back up the fence and we left the cattle where they were so that's first thing in the morning early in the morning to get that done to give us time to just Fin finish putting tractors on trailers trailers and tractors and stuff oh it's getting late but yeah oh bloody cattle oh I had to do it at that hour tonight but anyways they're semi sorted we're finish in the morning but anyways what I did want to talk about for the end of the video was as the, this video is titled the calm before the storm this is we're in the period between when first cut bale silage ends and second cut start which leads into the harvest and then that leads into like the second busy period of the year we got a week and a half <laughs> and every year we always tell ourselves in that space of time we're going to get trailers painted we're going to get, oh geez we're going to get a world of work done and what did we get done none of that stuff but we did get a lot of slurry tidied up and we got a lot of loose ends tidied up so it Look, it's not like there's idle days. Every day is a good busy day, as you've seen by today. We're always, we're always at, at it. We just can't get around to everything that we'd like to do. But in this time of the year, we generally spend a good bit of our time getting the yards tidy because coming into the harvest, two big things that have to be done is one, get the combine home, get hit service, get hit ready to go. We have to do a job on the auger this year because the auger failed on the slash. It structurally just gave up. We nursed it through the last bit and we have dogger off the burnt one whether we'll be able to put that on it or patch it into them i don't know that has to be sorted that's going to be quite a big job another job is get all the yards tidied and power wash get the grain sheds power washed out get all the yard in front and all that power washed out and down so it leaves the whole place clean for starting into the grain and <clears throat> we'll get that done over the next couple of evenings you get shed cleaned out you can get her up power washing while we're away keeping on top of all the other work but yeah that that's really it the, this is the in between and it all starts tomorrow second cut starts tomorrow harvest is on the the countdown too be sprayed off tomorrow so that's seven to ten days before it's ready to harvest and then it's whenever stray after that so the countdown is on for harvest 2021 all leads into one the second our second busy period of time and then when that's finished and it gets quiet again till slurry starts up then to get sheds emptied before the ban and then we're in the off period the winter where we just feed cattle and i'm looking forward to this winter with the workshop tidied out really hoping that we'll get take it be able to take into a lot of things maybe get some of the vintage tractors going and we'll just we we'll, hopefully now hopefully but look i'm going to stop ranting and raving that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It'll be of an insight into what goes on in the in-between, as you call it, or the calm before the storm. So, that is it from me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday. Sometimes I'll try and fit in a Sunday video if I can. It's just hard to keep on top of everything. Especially when we keep finding more things to get her more hardship as we like to call it to, to get into with the shop. But anyways, I'll go to Snyder here. Anyways, that is it for me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Good luck.